Welcome to the show. We got a lot of new changes happening. The first ones being that we are sponsored now uh, by Gramazon, the only online retailer that still accepts checks, and Jakebox, my new company that delivers a box of my crap to your house every month. This month's theme is my kitchen, so hurry because supplies are extremely limited. All right, roll the music. Ladies and gentlemen, from an undisclosed location in Portland, Oregon, the spare bedroom, it's time for MTG Tonight with your host, Jake Boss. Tonight on the program, we are joined by Gino BG, who's going to be telling us all about his life in Magic the Gathering as a uh, music business guy. Uh, he worked with huge groups uh, as a tour manager and all kinds of different stuff. We'll get into it later. But first, through the magic of television, wait, that camera. Sorry, we usually have another camera right there. Okay, well... Let me do the effect. Yes. <laughs> there you are. I'm here. He's here. How you doing? Great. Great to be here. You Thanks can ask me how I'm doing? Hey, how are you doing? Okay, I'm glad you asked. I have this giant bump on my forehead that is very obvious, and it's I'm super self-conscious about it, but it hurts like hell, if that makes it any better for people who want to comment on it. Could, uh... Fix that in post. No. 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 Uh, somebody else can fix that in post, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, okay. It's a little bit of CC wire removal that I don't feel like tackling uh, for the next three weeks. It's not but, the budget. Uh, yeah. There is no budget, in fact. You and I know each other. We do. For We've a known while. each other for a long time. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know about you, but because you're a little bit older than me, but more than half of my life. Uh, we've known each other at this point. How much older am I? A couple months? I don't know. Um, <laughs> when you're that age, you're everything is changing already. And yeah. you know, obviously, uh, I had a ton of issues growing up. That's how I ended up this way. But <laughs> yeah, uh, having like my partner in crime uh, was an essential part of that. And uh, you know, we uh, we definitely got into some trouble. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> so we had this uh, foreign exchange teacher from <laughs> Switzerland, Madalena Betzola. Miss Betzola. And uh, you could get away with anything in that class, and we actually did. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would get disciplinary referrals for uh, lightsaber fights, and people would jump out the windows and run relay I races. The, relay, the rally race out the windows. <laughs> We'd jump out the windows, run around the whole building, come back in the <laughs> side door and tag the next person. You'd roll out the window. Just, like, the most rotten <laughs> things to do to somebody who's, you know, stuck here. Yeah. As far as I understand, oh, like, they tried to send her back. Because I could imagine she probably was not very happy with the situation. All of our teachers out there, especially you Swiss teachers, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, later in life, we really do appreciate you, even yeah. if you don't show it at the moment. <laughs> if I had to do it all again, I certainly wouldn't. Oh, man. But, I you know, be so, the be past so is the past, and you might as well smile yeah, about it. Laugh, give it a good laugh and live and learn, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the thing that kind of bonded us, though, was music. Uh, I feel like my music stuff directly translated into me being what I am today, which is, you know, editorial and all that stuff. But yeah. for you, it was a little, little bit more direct, even. Kind of ended up pursuing it more as a more and more as a career. Even before you were out of high school, you were hustling. Yeah. Uh, so, at what age did you would you say that your career started? Well, my very first tour, I was 17. It was uh, summer of 2010, and I was, I guess, that was between my uh, sophomore and junior years of high school. Like, imagine uh, trusting someone who's a sophomore in high school with your whole production and <laughs> well, saying, "Yeah, that, well, that my first tour, I went out and I uh, I sold merchandise and stuff. So, I, oh, okay, I kind of went out and I uh, sold merchandise." Got to hang out with friends and travel and see a lot. And then uh, while I was doing that, I was also kind of learning and shadowing from our tour manager, who he's the one who was running the shot. So that's kind of where I got my foot in the door, slinging shirts and uh, just learning from people who had done it before me. So you started running the merch table. Uh, what did that develop into over time? Well, I still go out and do tours running merchandise, but it's kind of gotten to a new level where I'm also running VIP meet and greets. I'm more involved with inventory, tracking, but I also tour manage, which is a travel agent and a uh, and kind of an event coordinator, accountant all kind of thrown into one, and a babysitter kind of all thrown <laughs> into one. Like I'd uh, imagine that a million times a tour, people are saying, I don't know, ask Gino. 
<laughs> yeah, that's very common for sure. Yeah. Uh, what sort of tours have you uh, been on? Well, my most recent tour was with an artist called Bryce Fine, who's an amazing kind of new hip hop pop artist signed to Warner Brothers. But I've gotten to do tours supporting artists like the Chainsmokers or Vance Joy. Um, I've worked personally with bands like Metro Station. Uh, uh, we have a clip. Were we supposed to? You, you, I thought you brought a clip. Maybe next time. <laughs> Did he give it to Bryce? Yeah, I left it with the artist. They, okay. they got it. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just cut that part out. <laughs> no clip. Network's going to be pissed. Uh, so you've worked with some pretty large acts at this point, like uh, people that we had known as we were growing up and stuff like that. Like, this is your everyday thing. So how did that... Uh, obviously, this is a Magic the Gathering late-night talk show, one of many. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you fit into this whole uh, community? I've always been a bit of a collector, and growing up I loved uh, card games like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh as well, but uh, I really got into Magic while I was on tour. I was doing a tour called the Vans Warp Tour. Yeah. Um, on Warp Tour, there's kind of a community of all the merch people and stuff, because you all work such long festival hours every day together. You know, you're always kind of set up in similar areas together, and you kind of build a bond by the... The group I was with that particular year, a bunch of the dudes played Magic the Gathering. Or like and, what kind of formats? Um, you know, uh, usually standard, just kind of more recent cards and stuff. But uh, So just like whatever they had? like. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, because it was, it was a lot more casual, especially when you're on the road, you don't want to have like a lot of expensive cards that are going to get lost or stolen or beaten up or something. So like a lot of times, like... Uh, I'll be on the road and be like, you play Magic? I play Magic. Let's go pick up some decks at the store and I'll just play with some pre-constructed decks, you know, kind of cool. just casual. Just but uh. So for me, something that blew my mind was I was at a standard night. Um, I had just shown up from work. I made it with, you know, minutes to spare. And my first round opponent is Gino PG. <laughs> yeah. Like that blew my f-ing mind because I didn't even know that you played the game. Um, and I was like, okay, well, cool. It's nice that he showed up. Thanks for playing. Uh, w- w- nice nostalgia moment for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then I'll slaughter him. But you showed up, dude. Uh, you're talking about casual pre-constructed decks. Yeah. But that was the collection of someone who was serious about it. I don't claim to be good or expert at anything, you know, but I, I always loved, like, kind of strategy-based games and really kind of getting into building something that's kind of your own and, like, has a strategy that you kind of follow and kind yeah. of implement it, you know? Uh, I, I feel like with Standard and, uh, like, if you ever play Arena, you know, just the mm-hmm. casual play modes, um, it's a lot like practicing the same song over and over again. Yeah. And like, you know, there's something I'll, like comfortable about it. Exactly. Yeah. Like you get in the same groove and you know that you need to fill up your yard. So you're just hoping to talk to that, you know, that, uh, tormenting voice or whatever it is yeah. to sneak the L out, but or yeah. the, not the L sneak the W out. No. <laughs> See, I tried to get cute with my slang, but I got nothing. <laughs> I'm not cool. I'm not sneaking no L's. Usually when I get an L, it's a, it's a, a flaming show. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, today, this was super cool. Day nine, uh, slap the shit out of me on arena. Oh, and really? I was like, I tweeted at him like, is this you? And I took a picture of the screen and I go to his stream and there he is. And That's so funny. later tonight, I'm going to watch know, the VOD. I actually haven't played arena yet. I've You're kidding. watched video because it's PC only and I'm, Oh, yes. Do you have a trick for me? Oh, I no. Do. You do. So I've had this problem, and I'm always tweeting at uh, MTG Arena and Wizards Magic, like, when are you guys going to fix this? Because like, come on. Like, like I only so own Mac a copy of, of Windows 7. Okay. So my solve was, uh, okay, I'll just use the boot camp assistant. Yeah, so, there's always that. But when I tried to use that, it said, uh, hey, you need to partition your thing, and there's not enough space. Okay, so I solved that. And now in Mojave, which is the current Mac OS, they no longer support Windows 7, so you have to go back to High Sierra. So let me find a machine that has that. Okay, yeah. got it. But now it's like, okay, I can't look at that ISO file because in the FAT32 whatever, you can't have more than four gigabytes. So then I solved that. And wow. then... Uh, I realized, okay, you can just install Windows 10 and not activate it because it'll just burn a watermark that says activate Windows 
and you'd be like, no, really? I'm and not going to. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> nah. you can install Windows um, and if you have at least 40 gigabytes free on your hard drive on a Mac. Hey. Use the Windows 10 uh, latest build of it. Okay. And then you're off and running. So for the last week, after months of wanting to play this stupid game, yeah. I'm finally playing Arena. How about a hand, boys? Yeah. Thank you. The so, wonders of, of Google and stuff to figure all this stuff out, yeah. Well, it's so stupid because like this is a recent problem where they dropped off uh, Windows 7. Um, <laughs> like I would love to use my legal copy of it. Not that I'm using an illegal copy, I'm just not activating it. I but. just don't understand. I mean, I'm sure it costs a lot of money to develop games for two different operating softwares, but... That's the thing, is it's uh, built in Unity, which is meant to be uh, ported to every device like instantaneously. Oh, see, now Wizards is just kind of slacking then. Cause well, they're... okay, so the reasoning behind it is sound. So just like, well, not like sound, but it's reasonable. Um, just like with a movie where you want to finish the edit first, then send it to color correction, visual effects, and sound design, and all that different stuff. You want to, when you're in a beta build, just focus on one platform, then start porting it out to eight different places. Instead so of there'll be an update eventually that yeah, will bring it when over. they yeah. finally launch it out of beta because right now it's open beta or something like that. It's like how some movies get released on Netflix in non-U.S. countries first. Mm -hmm. uh, while the movies are still in theaters, yeah, and we're stuck with nothing. <laughs> so yeah, the trick I use on tour with Netflix is whenever I go to Canada, they have a bunch of stuff U.S. doesn't have, so oh. I save a bunch of stuff for offline and bring it back, and then I just have it. You're smuggling Netflix in this country, <laughs> yeah, over international borders. Lock them up, boys. <laughs> Anyway, uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about Gino's standard decks that he played back in that time when you were active in standard, which was around Ixalan-ish, uh, which is yeah. right when I fell out, too. And uh, we're going to talk about the future and Great. what that all looks like for you. Love so it. don't touch that dial. Don't fall asleep. Don't skip ahead to any time codes because we're going to be right back. We are back. We are sitting with Gino BG. Gino, uh, where we left off was we were talking a little bit about Standard yeah. and uh, how you're a pretty decent player at the time. God knows how good of a player you are now because Standard changes so freaking often. <laughs> but um, I've actually been just like so busy recently. I haven't gotten to play or uh, have updated my decks or anything which recently. Is, so. That's why I'm so into Commander. Is because Commander's cool, yeah. I I've been wanting to get more into Popper, yeah. Uh, just because it's it's cheaper. It's not going away know, either. It's, yeah, it seems like it's getting more popular, and it's just it seems like there's a there's a a lot more room for like creativity as far as like what cards are being used and more diverse and kind of. It's another one of those formats where you can just buy a deck for life. Yeah, exactly. I like uh, I like those kind of creative. Uh, formats that aren't so like meta driven, you know. Yeah, but uh, so when you did play standard, what decks did you mainly play? Uh, you know, there was two that I used a lot. Uh, I loved mono red aggro, and I played a lot of the soul tie energy. Uh, okay, so who are the stars of the show in your red aggro deck? Oh man, uh, you're gonna have to help me out with some some oh, names. No. What are you kidding? <laughs> this is a quiz. Uh, there's a Hazaret. Hazaret the Fervent, of course. He was great. Uh, you know, the thing with I, the thing with that deck is because of the style and the low cost for all the cards, I, I was always kind of like rotating cards in and out and trying out new cards and stuff. Um, yeah, I love playing a card where it hits the table and in standard somebody has to say, okay, but what does that do? In my time since I got in, there's always been some iteration of a red aggro deck. Yeah. And so... Uh, like, no matter what is across the table in the meta, like, you can still have a red aggro race. Yeah, exactly. And probably hold your own. Yeah. Like, uh, when I played modern for a little bit, uh, you know, I'd be testing with my friends, like, they would you know, I only had the one Naya Burn deck, mm -hmm. but they would come at me with some new brew with some standard card to get Snapcaster out of the yard and this, that, the third. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, Lava Spike, you're yeah, dead. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. There's something about like the simplicity 
of that deck. Burn is always going to be around. That's just you know you're just always you're just always going going wide going in all the time. And uh, whereas with like the energy deck, that one's a little bit different. There's uh, there's just so much synergy between cards and the whole energy aspect of it because with that you could go wide but then once you had them up you just could all of a sudden spring them all up too okay so you know hang on we're getting a little too vague here (laughs) i played red green energy okay teamer energy Mm -hmm. but sultai energy take me through kind of the lines of play what is it you were trying to do you know with the mix of black it had a little bit of like discard and stuff that i could use against a glint something that it's a glint two drop black. sleeve siphoner siphoner yeah uh i also played the constricting uh, uh the snake you guys know it <laughs> it's a winding constrictor no that was a green card yeah was it that was it? yeah i think so well, okay well then what was that snake where you discard a card and it gets plus two plus two <sighs> See, that's i think a we have a question well, do we have a clip we have, yeah, a clip. we have a clip. Yep, that's the card right there. Card appears. <laughs> See, this is why I love having a network behind us. <laughs> because uh, special effects, baby. Stuff like that. Like I couldn't do this by myself. <laughs> anyway, mono red aggro, sultai energy. Were there any other brews that you worked on? I like the approach of the second sun. Yes. During the almond cat. Kind that card's set. gonna be around forever. That so that's you know that's a fun one. Also kind of, I like the decks like that usually have a pretty dedicated purpose, and like that one is obviously about just getting those cards out and winning the game. And uh, yeah. so you know, and using all the kind of tricks to draw more cards and stuff was always kind of fun. And like as more of like a casual player. Playing other people, I come across a lot of cards that I just don't know, you know? I've never seen them before. Knowing and kind of uh, just believing in what, you know, your deck strategy is supposed to be can help you kind of negate some of those fears in a way. uh, Where you're like, okay, this guy might have a trick in a hat, but I know if I do this, this, and this, it should play out like this, so. Which is why I loved my red-green energy deck. It was Electrostatic Pummeler. I don't know if you remember this guy. I do, yeah. That card, like, everyone tried to make it happen, and there was, like, a blue-green version for a while. Yeah. But mine was Pummeler Fling, and I would beef him up mm-hmm. and make him, like, 24-24 or 48 or whatever. And yeah. I'd just swing in, um, like, say, swing in for 12, then fling him for the other 12. Mm-hmm. Um, or some other play like that. Or, like, sorry, I gave him Hexproof. Yeah. Uh, but I would be sitting there with no cards in hand, Top deck in invigorated rampage or something, giving plus four plus oh trample. Just like that, yeah. Sorry, I loved it. And that's, you did you did great this whole game, but I'm going to win. Yeah, and that that all kind of plays with like the synergy of the energy deck and yes. being able to like get those cards or ramp up a card, you know, exactly when you need to to like you know really either save yourself or just completely take over. So I think that's why like I'm really excited about playing standard cards on arena. Mm. is uh, energy is gone. Energy was so reliable yeah. and fun to play because it's you true. sat down, you knew what you were going to do. Yep. But with something like, you know, your Is It Drake's or Golgari something or whatever is in standard right now. I don't mm-hmm. know. Tell me in the comments what's in standard that's good right now. Um, even if this is a year from now. Tell me what's good in standard. <laughs> uh, I think this is a really good time to get back into it because uh, those versatile things like Four color energy, teamer mm-hmm. energy, you know, like these things that cause a ton of bands and stuff are out the window. It's true, yeah. I remember because getting into it and people being like, what's with all these bands? And I remember <laughs> like every couple of weeks it seemed like there was a new band. And uh, it's always kind of part of the challenge of like trying to figure out the whole like, what is this game and the landscape and stuff. But, uh, you know, you kind of learn those details and it yeah. all kind of works itself out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dealing with bands really sucks when you're first getting into it. Which yeah. is, like, I don't know if you remember the day that they banned Smuggler's Copter, Emrakul, and mm-hmm. uh, all that stuff. I played an Emrakul deck. It was like a teamer <laughs> and merge deck. Yeah. And, you know, th- I, this was like my second deck ever. Not just yeah. standard deck, like my second deck. Yeah. And all of the cards that I had traded into are now dead because I'm ramping to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I ramped to um, five blue-blue enchantment. 
uh, whatever this is, it, uh, whatever this is, it's a. Uh, Jeez, I can't remember cards today. Exile the top card of an opponent's library. You get to play it if it's an online card when they cast their first spell. Oh my god! You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly. Mind Stylation. Yeah. Okay. That's the card. See now you see it too. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that from now Up on. Up here. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until I remember it for the audience <laughs> to see it. So it's like, who's that Pokemon? It's like a little thought bubble. Oh yeah. It's Pikachu. <laughs> If you were to get back into Magic after this long, because it's, a lot, it's really hard for standard players who dipped out of it, you know, at our level of casual, mm -hmm. where you're serious enough to play the good cards and have yeah. a play set of the cards you need. Yeah. Um, if, if how do you see yourself getting back into it? Is it in standard popper? What do you think your next purchase will be? Especially with my lifestyle kind of traveling a lot and just always being somewhere different around different people it's hard to find a consistent group of people that i can play with yeah uh and i think a lot of people kind of have that challenge where they they're like oh this game's really interesting and like it looks cool but i don't know who to play it with so that's always kind of a struggle i think that's one of the reasons like arena looks very cool and yeah. i want to try it you it's know? so good to like sit down and get a 10 minute game in yeah exactly with arena we can say to people, hey, you know, like I told you guys, the crew earlier today, like, you can go learn it now. It's yeah. right there. It's free. It's, it's on true. Windows. Yeah. If you don't have Windows, here's a solution. You know? Yeah. And I also use the uh, the Magic Origins app. The Duels one. Duels. Yeah. The it used to be Duels of the Planeswalkers, but now it's just Duels. Okay, Magic Duels. Yeah, okay. I think you can still get it. So yeah, I played all through that game, and that's that kind of... I got in around Origins and Zendikar, mm. like 2015-ish, probably. Yeah. And that's like right when that game came out, too. So I was like, started playing with some people, and then like I really wanted to learn how to play, and I played that like all the way through, and that basically taught me how to play. So I've told myself, you know, you can buy the starter pack for five bucks, because they deserve <laughs> yeah. your five bucks, but hold off, you know? Yeah. Like, if you want to play that draft, you had better grind and get your coins to play the draft. Yeah, it's, a, it's those kind of in-game transactions that are so popular now. It's like, you know, we, all, we love to hate on them, but then we play a game we really like, and you're like, Ah, five bucks for some coins could do this. Yeah. Like, I mean, you think about nice. think about how much money you spent on your last burrito. Was that close to five dollars? <sighs> yeah, exactly. Might have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been really good having you here because these are some stories that I actually have not heard because you know we were really close in eighth grade and stuff, and we've you know tangentially been in each other's lives. But yeah. uh, having this moment on the show to catch up has been really awesome. Love it. It's been great. Yeah. So it'll be fun to have you come back and tell us about your new local meta and how things have kind of changed uh, over time uh, since we last talked to you. Yeah. But that is our show. If you like what we do, please subscribe on YouTube. But if you love what we do, please support us on Patreon. And if you want to tell us what sort of decks we should be playing in Standard, please let us know in the comments section. Let's start a conversation there. There's all kinds of cool stuff happening on the channel with people talking in the comments section about tips and crap like that. So let's keep that going. That's really cool. The network requires that I mention Gramazon one more time, the only retailer that still accepts checks. Please have a great night. Stay safe and don't bother me.